we interrupting something, or yeah. do you want to show me the notes, or yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, I can see it's Casual Friday, Mr. Bass. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to surprise anybody, but have to keep people on their toes. All right, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today in Bali, in Indonesia, the Secretary General attended the leaders' gathering of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which focused on sustainable development. In his remarks, he said that our world is simply not going far enough and fast enough to realize the sustainable development goals and stressed the areas of particular concern, inequality, and climate change. To tackle inequalities, he said, we must take a broad range of strategies to eradicate poverty and ensure inclusive development, among them improving access to quality education, health care, reforming the tax system, and to make it more equitable and harnessing the rich diversity and demo demo demographic dividend of youth. Have a seat, Benny, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, and on climate, the Secretary General said that we can limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees and have many of the technologies we need. Ahead of the 24th session of the Conference of Parties um, on the UN Framework on Climate Change, which will take place in December in Poland, he urged countries to resolve the sticking point and make sure that the world leaves Katowice with critically important implementation guidelines for operationalizing the Paris Agreement. His four remarks are online. Also this morning, the Secretary General met with the President Joko Widodo of Indonesia and tomorrow, as we've been telling you, he will visit Palu on Sulawesi Island, which, as you know, was struck by an earthquake and a tsunami almost two weeks ago. And also on Indonesia, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that in central Sulawesi, more than 2,000 people have died, almost 11,000 have been seriously injured, and 680 are still missing following the recent earthquake, tsunami, and landslides. Buildings have collapsed, been swept away, or suffered extensive damage, with whole villages having been submerged to the gr when the ground is liquefied. Some 67,000 houses have been damaged, and nearly 88,000 people are currently displaced. 18,000 people have left Palu and are staying with relatives in other parts of the country. While many families' homes are still standing, many people are choosing to sleep outside at night and the displacement camps fearing further aftershocks. Despite the damage to infrastructure, life in Palu is returning to some sense of normalcy, with shops, markets, banks reopening, and electricity and telecommunications being accessible across most of the city. And yesterday evening, the Deputy Secretary General spoke at a UN Foundation Global Leadership Dinner. She paid tribute to former Secretary General Kofi Annan, calling him her touchstone. For all of us who believe in affirming the power of our common humanity, he was an inspiration, Ms. Mohammed said. She paid tribute to his courage, compassion, humility, commitment to peace, and enduring conviction of the dignity of every person in the power of collective action. She stressed the need for more leaders like Kofi Annan, adding that the best way to honor him is to take up the torch he passed. And earlier today, we issued a statement on Nigeria in which the Secretary General said he was deeply saddened by reports that 200 people have died and 1,300 have been injured and nearly 2 million affected by recent floodings along the river Niger and Benue in Nigeria. More than half a million people have been internally displaced and over 350,000 are in need of immediate humanitarian assistance. The Secretary General extends his condolences to the families of the victims and to the government and people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the UN also expresses its solidarity with Nigeria during this difficult time and stands ready to help as, to support as required. And we also issued a statement last night on a um, uh, very fatal bus crash in Kenya. On Yemen, the special envoy for Yemen, Martin Griffiths, is in Muscat in Oman today, where he arrived after visiting Riyadh over the past few days, where he met with Saudi and Yemeni officials. Meanwhile, humanitarian partners are monitoring cyclonic storm Luban, which is likely to move towards Yemen and preparing to respond al alongside local authorities as needed. The storm is currently west central in the west central Arabian Sea um, and is expected to intensify further move westward over the next four days along the Gulf of Aden, and it is uh, east-northeast of Socotra Island uh, currently. Uh, our colleagues at OCHA are, are, in con are in contact with the government of Yemen's High Relief Committee and Ministry of International Cooperation 
as well as local authorities in the impacted governorates. NGOs are preparing to undertake rapid needs assessment in affected areas. Rapid response kits over 5,000 people are pre-positioned in the Mukalla, Hadrawat, and Shabwa for 7,000 people. Humanitarian partners are also pre-positioning supplies if Socotra, in Socotra if needed. Rapid response for Abyan and Aden will be supported from stocks available in Aden. And turning to Syria, our humanitarian colleagues there are reporting an escalation of airstrikes and ground-based hostilities that continue to impact civilians in part of the anti-Daesh operations in Deir ez-Zor in Syria. Yesterday, several civilians were reportedly killed, including a child and several others were injured by airstrikes on al-Shafa town in southeastern rural Deir ez-Zor. Over the past month, scores of civilians have reportedly been killed, injured, while up to 10,000 remain trapped inside the Hajin area. Thousands of civilians from Hajin have been displaced due to the fighting. Some of the displaced are in makeshift camps where conditions are reportedly dire, with lack of access to health care, water, sanitation, and hygiene. The UN continues to urge all parties to respect their obligations on international humanitarian law and to take constant care to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure, including humanitarian personnel and assets. And earlier today, Leila Zarugi, the Secretary General Special Representative in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and head of the peacekeeping mission there, briefed the Security Council via teleconference on the situation in the country. She thanked members of the Council for their recent visit to the DRC, and Ms. Zarugi said the trip gave the Council a unique opportunity to witness firsthand the situation on the ground ahead of the December elections. She noted that the electoral process was progressing according to a set calendar, but also highlighted major challenges in the process, including armed group activities in the east of the country, the opposition's lack of trust in the process, and the number of female candidates on the ballot. She further highlighted the insecurity in the East and notably armed attacks around Beni and had, had complicated ongoing efforts to end an uh, ongoing Ebola outbreak. And today is the International Day of the Girl Child. The theme this year is with her a skilled girl force, and it looks at today's generation of girls preparing to enter a world of work that is being transformed by innovation and automation. In his message, the Secretary General said that far too often, Girls are, are not given the space and opportunities they need to achieve their full potential, and they face multiple barriers such as systematic discrimination, biases, and lack of training. He stressed the need to equip girls with transferable lifelong skills such as critical thinking, creativity, and digital awareness, as well as providing them with role models, especially in the sciences and other fields where the presence of women is sparse. The Secretary General noted that his Youth 2030 strategy aims to work with girls, understand their needs, and help put their ideas to work. Now comes your part. Yes, sir. Thanks, uh, Steph. So uh, the, the, the Kurdish uh, forces in northern Syria, they say they have more than 900 uh, uh, foreign fighters uh, from ISIS, mm -hmm. they, they are captured by them. So do you, do you believe or does the SG believe that they should be prosecuted uh, before an, any international body or that the UN should be part of uh, uh, the, the justice? Uh, you know, obviously this cases? is a complex uh, issue given uh, the nationality, the, the fact that they're foreign fighters and that some of the countries that they come from uh, are not, uh, they're not able to return or do not want them back. What is important is that those who have committed crimes during this uh, conflict face justice. Exactly how that happens, I think, is something we will have to see. And on Western Sahara, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, so the SG recommended that uh, uh, Minorsu's mandate uh, to be extended for one year. Mm -hmm. Uh, why one year it was extended for six months before, and uh, what's his message to uh, both parties uh, before the resumption of uh, the informal talks uh, in two months from now? Well, I think one year obviously gives it, uh, gives it greater stability, uh, which I think is, Im is, is important. Uh, and uh, the, the, the message uh, to the parties as well is obviously also to work uh, with, his, uh, with his special envoy, Mr. Kohler. 
thank you, Steph. Um, on Martin Griffiths, um, we know he's been traveling. Is there any progress report on what he's achieved in trying to um, get the Houthis and the government to actually sit down to talk? Uh, you know, I think when he's ready to announce uh, progress and a new date, he will. Uh, we know what happened in Geneva. Uh, not too long ago. Uh, Mr. Griffiths is now, as, as you know, back back on the road trying to get the parties again to the table. But I think we, uh, we remain realistic at this point. Mr. Avni, and then we'll go to Mr. Roth. Uh, a couple of questions about the Khashoggi affair, uh -huh. and uh, then I have another question about something else. Uh, the, the, first of all, does the UN have anything? I mean, we have... Obviously, I mean, do we have any information? Secondly, uh, the, it, it, speaking of Yemen, is there any concern it, about the, 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 the realignment of alliances that, I mean, Saudi Arabia is obviously very uh, involved in Yemen. There's the special envoy who, as you said, just uh, happened to be in Riyadh have any concern that because of this whole affair, there will be some different approach towards uh, the uh, One thing the situation in Yemen does not lack is complexity. Um, so in term on the political track. So I think I will leave the, the analysis uh, and the forward thinking on that end to, to you and your, and your colleagues. Uh, Mr. Griffiths is very much focused and continues to be focused on the political track. Uh, on the on, on the case of Mr. Kosogi, we have no independent information. We're not obviously involved in any investigation. Uh, there have been contacts uh, with Saudi officials from the UN, UN Secretary to Saudi officials to express our concern uh, about uh, Mr. Kosogi's and his and his fate. Um, and uh, we continue to call on, obviously, on the Saudi uh, authorities to to cooperate fully with the investigations. And we understand the Turks, uh, the Turkish authorities, are doing. Mr. Wait, another question I have, and that is on something completely different. Uh, is Matthew Lee barred from the building? Uh, even though, even not as a journalist, I mean, if he is. Uh, like he's, that there's a story that he came to. He tried to join a. Yes, you you I, 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 you, you may not have been in in the room, but uh, your colleague Mr. Klein asked that same question, and I answered in the affirmative. Mr. Roth, continuing on the. Kish it, just look at the transcript, Mr. Roth. Kish continuing on the Khashoggi trend, on my question yesterday, and now you're saying there are contacts, but as the yeah. Secretary General himself. Spoken to no, senior uh, senior officials uh, here in the Secretariat have spoken and to. And do you this. feel that the climate created by many world leaders calling the press an enemy of the people, certain the rise of the strong men around, has contributed to attacks on journalists like Mr. Khashoggi? And do you think the UN should be making more of a public fuss about this? Enough with the quiet diplomacy. It doesn't have to be a journalist. Man walks into a consulate and may have been dismembered by a saw. Look, I, I think the Secretary General has been very public and very strong in his defense of journalists, uh, in calling for protection of journalists. He, he raised the issue of the two Reuters journalists very publicly in the Security Council, as he has with other uh, cases. I don't think he's ever been shy uh, on, on that issue. Madam. A follow up on that, Stefan. Uh, you said you're not involved, but would you be involved or did you ask to get involved in the investigation? No, I, I think this is an issue uh, that happened on, uh, on Turkish soil. The Turkish authorities are clearly in the lead of the, in the investigation. We would hope uh, that the Saudis and everybody else cooperates with them. Um, I have a uh, follow up on that and then two other questions, two other subjects. Sure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, when you talk about um, that uh, UN officials contacted somebody, uh, Saudi officials, can you more specify, please? Is it in Riyadh or here? Um, it was here in New York, but I'm not going to get any more specifics at this point. And w w w what, which answer did you get? I mean, uh, 
we, we expressed our our concern. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to relay uh, what was said by uh, the the Saudi official. I would um, I think you can ask uh, Saudi authorities. Um, the other yes, you had, no, you had another okay. one. So the other question is in Yemen. If you have any updates regarding the humanitarian situation there. Uh, no, in fact, we, we asked and we hope to get a, a more thorough update uh, of what's going on around Hodeida uh, and other parts of the country uh, tomorrow. Evelyn. Yeah, to continue to belabor, belabor the Khashoggi incident, uh, has the SG spoken to Turkey at all? It, uh, journalists have been killed and murdered, but this is a particularly egregious no, we've, case. We've, uh, the, the Secretary General has not, as I said, he's been uh, traveling in the court of far away time zone, um, but they have also, we've also uh, been speaking to Turkish officials as well. Stefano. Yes. I will leave uh, it at that. When the Secretary General went to Saudi Arabia, I believe last month, right? or, um, yes, uh, did he, because you say that the Secretary General always uh, talks with leaders about the concern of freedom of the press and uh, safety of journalists. Did he talk with the uh, with the king or with any official at that time of the concern about the safety of journalists in Saudi Arabia? Or I don't have, you know, he went there uh, on very short notice uh, having to do with the uh, Ethiopia-Eritrea uh, agreement, and I think that's where the discussions uh, focused. Madame Monica, you are most welcome. <laughs> 